Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And what a journey this is. We are all the way back to the 1800s, back to the days of civil war, just before the civil war, no, right after the civil war. And we're gonna talk to the curator of the Harriet Tubman Museum and Educational Center, Mr. William Jarman. And we will learn a lot about Harriet Tubman, about the Eastern Shore of Maryland, and a time and a place that none of you know anything about. And I, I want to say that we're doing this because of the movie about Harriet Tubman. And it it's a good movie. Make, make no mistake about that. But there's so much that we don't know. So, Mr. Jarman, welcome. Yes. Yeah, there you are. Hello. Tell us about Mr. Tell us about Mr. Jarman and the museum. Well, William Jarman was born and raised in Cambridge, Maryland, here on the eastern shore of Marlborough Peninsula. And it is here in Dorchester County, Maryland. I eventually became an educator and was a school teacher, and then eventually went into administration and ended my career as a principal. Once retired, I returned from Prince George's County, Maryland, back to Dorchester County, and became, uh, let's say, an individual who wanted to volunteer his time and continue my services that I knew that I was capable of doing. And so I joined the uh, Harriet Tubman Museum and Education Center. And it was here that I eventually found myself being a curator and also one who was speaking on behalf of the legacy of Harriet Tubman and also giving God it tours. Well, can we show um, a short video of Harriet Tubman, the beginning of Harriet Tubman? We will show this video, please. Harriet Tubman was enslaved from the day she was born on a plantation in an area called Peter's Neck on the eastern shore of Maryland. One of her first memories was seeing her sisters taken away on a chain gang and lost forever. She never closed her eyes, she said, without imagining that she saw the horsemen coming and heard the screams of families being broken apart. Every time I saw a white man, I was afraid of being carried away. Wow, what a beginning. William, tell yes. us a little bit more about Harriet. Tell us a little bit more about Harriet. After she was well, taken we know the, that as a Harriet child. Tumlin, yeah, she was born here in Dorchester County and she uh, was born on a plantation that was owned by Anthony uh, Thompson. However, her story really begins with her grandmother who was sold from a slave ship here on the Choptank River to a family called the Pattisons. And it was here that Harriet what we call her Araminta's mother was born. So prior to Araminta, there was a mother called Harriet and a grandmother called Modesty. And by uh, incidents that occurred, uh, the Araminta's mother was given as a wedding gift to a young lady named Mary Patterson who married a Brodus. And Mary and Mr. Brodus had a son two years later, and then he died. And so the mother married Anthony Thompson. And so we have Harriet O'Ritt, uh, who was uh, basically on the uh, Thompson plantation where she meets old Ben, 
who is Ben Ross. And Ben Ross and she, in 10 years, have six children, the last being Araminta. And it was here that the young man named um, uh, uh, Bro Mr. Brodus' son, Edward Brodus, had to sue Anthony Thompson, who raised him for his inheritance. And from that court case, the Edward Brodus and a slave woman, Harriet Ross, was taken back to the Brodus farm. And here, Harriet's mother has three additional children. And of course, they were all farmed out to work for different people. Harriet had a rough time because she felt like she was never treated fairly by the mistress of the house. However, she was eventually struck in the head by a two pound weight and was sick for about three months. And because of her attitude and her personality, she was told to go live with her father on the Thompson plantation, leaving her mother and other brother and sister with the Brodus. So Mr. Thompson and uh, Mr. Brodus always had a conflict of interest over the Ross children. Harriet so eventually we... married John Tubman. And it was this union between a free man and an enslaved woman that brought a lot of tension to the two enslavers and to the enslavees. Uh, Harriet was never able to convince her husband to run away with her. And then in 1849, she decided to run away after her owner, Edward Brodus, died. This video we're going to see now is a pivotal part in Harriet Tubman's life where she is struck in the head and that changes everything about her going forward. Mindy was strong and iron-willed. One day at the Bucktown store, an overseer ordered her to stop an enslaved young man from escaping. She refused. The overseer threw an iron weight it accidentally hit her instead. That weight struck me in the head and broke my skull. They carried me to the house all bleeding and fainting. But I went to work again, and I worked with the blood and sweat rolling down my face. That video shows exactly what that moment that as she went through life with that broken head, that she says it allowed her to see in depth. It gave her a different view and she could understand. And that's how it gave her that ability to follow the path to freedom and to bring other people with her. So if we can go back to the, go to the next video, please. We heard that some of us was going with the chain gang down to the cotton and rice fields, and they said I was going. But Harriet Tubman refused to be sold. One night in the fall of 1849, she stole away from a plantation at Poplar Neck in Caroline County. She raced to freedom by herself, sometimes on foot, and sometimes with the help of a loose network of trustworthy, enslaved, and free blacks, and white helpers who hid her and sheltered her as she made her way from station to station on the Underground Railroad. Wow, what a journey. And we have one more video, I think. Today, you can walk in her footsteps. The Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway 
retraces the courageous exploits of this small, unassuming, and brilliant woman. A woman who survived enslavement, freed herself, then became an Underground Railroad leader, abolitionist, wartime nurse, spy, soldier, farmer, a businesswoman, and fighter for women's rights. This is where she lived, where she suffered, and where she accomplished great things. We can still travel through history with Harriet Tubman, moving always toward freedom. Thank you. I, the state of Maryland was gracious enough to allow us to use their videos so we want to shout out to this uh, state of Maryland for being so gracious. And uh, William, now tell us about yes. the museum. Where you the museum was started. The museum was started by a, a group of ladies who uh, belong to two of the uh, oldest black churches here in Cambridge, Maryland. And there was a church that we believe the Tubmans um, attended, which is called Basil Church, which is in Bucktown. And Bucktown was the community that kept the legacy of Harriet Tubman uh, before the public here in Dorchester County. And after so many years celebrating her birthday. Marta, can you hear me? Yes. I need him to restart because he's sitting forward. He always has getting chopped off. He needs to redo what he just got. Okay. All right, William, can you okay. hear us? William, can you hear me? I can hear you. William. Okay. You need to okay. Now. Yes, I, I can hear you. We need to. We need to. Okay, sit forward no, 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 sit so back. we can see you. Sit, 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 oh, right. sit back. That's good. Yeah. Stop. Right there. Now okay. tell us about the museum. Start all over again. Tell us about the museum. Uh, the museum was started by a group of ladies who attended Wall Chapel uh, United Methodist Church and Bethel AME Church. And these ladies were related to families in the Bucktown uh, region. And we often associate Harriet Tubman with Bucktown because that's the community where she started working. And it was at this particular uh, church called Basil that we think the Tubman family attended. And so the community of Bucktown uh, continued the legacy of Harriet Tubman for the local people here in Dorchester County. And so it wasn't too long when a lady from North Carolina decided that she loved Harriet Tubman to the point that she felt something should be erected in her name in the county. And the first thing that was erected was a land uh, or a sonnage near or on the Brodus farm. And then eventually came what we call the Memorial Garden to Harriet Tubman. And they were able to secure a building on Race Street. What is that? Known better. That's someone trying to call me. I'm sorry. And building on Ray Street 424 has to do with uh, the legacy Marcia, of Harriet Tubman. Marcia, tell them to stop and then go back before the phone ring and restart. The state and the county, uh, and they secured William, the building. William. Yes. William. You have to stop yes. and go back before the phone. Go back before the phone call. Start telling us about okay. the lady from North Carolina, right there. The yes. lady from North Carolina. Uh, the ladies of Belpha AME and Wall Chapel Church started association, an association or a committee, and they were honoring Harriet Tubman uh, in March of each year. Eventually, they decided to become a 501c3. And because of that 
501c3, they, be, they started getting recognition from the state of Maryland. And it was through the state of Maryland, through the uh, Maryland Park Service and tourism, that they brought life to Harriet Tubman and her legacy here in Dorchester County. I was a student here in Dorchester County, and the Rosses and the Tubmans still live here today, or the descendants of John Tubman and the descendants of Harriet uh, Ross uh, Tubman. And eventually they received enough funding to purchase the building on Race Street, 424 Race Street, and they started educational activities for the young and then for adults. And then eventually they were holding what they call Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad discussion uh, groups the fourth Saturday of every month. And the fourth Saturday of every month since I would say 2003 uh, up until 2010, the people would come together from Delaware and especially from Caroline County and Dorchester County and talk about the history behind the Underground Railroad in Dorchester County and the Eastern Shore. And that man was John Creighton, uh, Kate Clifford Larson, Pat Lewis, uh, Evelyn Townsend, and a few other people. And then they started having a banquet every year in honor of Harriet uh, Ross Tubman. And then eventually they asked permission or wrote a letter to the state of Maryland and to the uh, federal government, the Interior Department, asking if they would come in and support the organization to come up with a land area that they could call the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad. And that was in 1992. And by 2017, we now have the Underground Railroad Historical National Park, which is today called the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad State Park Visitor Center. So we can give credit to the people who still operate and still own the building, Harriet Tubman Museum and Education Center on Race Street here in Cambridge. And due to the fact that we now have a mural on the back of our building, which is a south side called Take My Hand, done by Michael Rosado, it has brought more attention than we ever thought we would have. And uh, we do thank the people of Dorchester County, Cambridge, Maryland, for all that they've done to let's say, continue the legacy of Harriet Ross Tubman, who made her last trip here in 1860, hoping that she would be able to free or help free her sister, her two children, and her husband. And that is the, the history of the organization started by a group of people, as I said before, from Bethel, and Wall Church, who started in their oh, homes. William. I hear you. William, okay. Would you give us the address of the museum so people that are listening and watching can yes. know where you're located? The address is 424 Race, R-A-C-E, Street, Cambridge, Maryland, Zip code 21613. And the when telephone number is, telephone number is 410-228-0401. And we're open Tuesday through Friday, 12 to 3 p.m. And Saturdays, 12 to 4 p.m. So we can come meet you then. Yes, you can. And you can email us at Harriet Tubman at Verizon.net. 
Well, William, it's been a pleasure spending this time with you. And we look forward to meeting you in person. And again, thank you for the state of Maryland to providing us with all those beautiful videos and aloha, and we'll see you next time. And as we see in Dorchester County,